Welcome to this tutorial for the working title G1000 in MSFS. We're using Masiris SR22 for this low altitude flight between Tokyo and Nagoya, which we've planned in the world map. Even if you're not learning the G1000, I'd recommend you still come along for this flight as the views are spectacular and the conditions are lively. On the tarmac at Haneda, we'll head down to the MFD and we'll go to the flight plan page. So we'll just check that we have a flight plan that's fed through from the world map from runway to runway. Everything looks good. We've got our SID out of Haneda, some en route waypoints and our arrival and approach into Nagoya. The G1000 has also pre-planned altitudes, which means we can use VNAV during our flight. And with that checked, we can exit the flight plan page and we'll tune in our nav radio to the ILS frequency at our destination. There's just a few more things left to do. First of all, we'll turn on the pitot heat. We'll now set our autopilot for the flight. We'll set our selected altitude to the 6,000 feet in our flight plan, although we'll probably need to increase this for terrain later on. We'll hit vertical speed and set our desired vertical speed to a climb of 1,000 feet per minute. We'll also activate nav mode so the plane will follow our plan. So park and brake off and throttle up. We'll rotate at around 80 knots. We'll follow the FD as we climb out and activate the autopilot once we're in the air. We'll also set the flaps back to zero as our speed increases. During this flight, we'll alternate between an in-depth look at the systems and the scenery. Starting with the easy stuff, just use the range control to zoom in and out of your map on the MFD. Our plane continues to climb to 6,000 feet where it levels off. We see the altitude enunciator appear on the PFD and the airplane transitions into straight and level flight. Let's check out the Direct2 functionality on the G1000. So as you scroll through your flight plan, if you want to go direct to a waypoint, hit the Direct2 key and you can then either activate that, head to that waypoint or hold at that waypoint and you'll press the Enter key to commit your selection. We'll now take a look at some of the radar display modes on the MFD map. So if you press the Map Option soft key, you can activate a traffic display as well as a weather radar. So you can see here we've got some small clouds just ahead of us. You can also switch the terrain view from a topographic map to a relative map as well as switch it off completely. We'll be using the relative map later on in this flight. Let's check out some of the options that are available on the PFD. On the transponder tab you have the option to switch the transponder on or off. We'll switch it on, we should probably have done that earlier. There's also a shortcut for the VFR code of 7000, as well as the option to add the code you're given by ATC. And of course, there's also an ident button. Once you've made your selection, just hit back and the soft keys return to their default state. So as we see Mount Fuji off our left wing, let's head back to the PFD menu and check out some of the PFD options. So the winds display will give you three ways of displaying the current winds, speed and direction. I'll leave my preferred one on the PFD. Additionally, on the PFD, you can also display a list of the nearest airports. So this will provide the airport IDs, contact frequency, and details of the runways. So you can either tune your communication radio or redirect to those airports. We'll now head back to the MFD and take a look at how we can activate and configure our approaches. So heading into the procedures page of the MFD, you can either activate vector to final or activate your approach if you want to do that early, or you can select your approach from the list of runways and approaches at your destination airport. You also have the option to do the same thing with arrivals and departures, so SIDs and stars. If you want to quit without making changes, there is a handy go back soft key below the menu. So it looks like the terrain ahead could cause us some problems, so we'll activate the relative terrain view on the MFD to check that out. The terrain displayed is red, which means it is above our current altitude. We need to increase our altitude until we're at a height where that terrain is displayed as yellow, green or not displayed at all. So we'll select an altitude of around 17,000 feet 
and put the aircraft into vertical speed mode at a thousand feet per minute to put us into a climb to clear those mountains. We can also check the velocity vector displayed on the PFD which shows us our trajectory will take us over the mountains. As we climb we reach an altitude where the terrain is no longer going to be a problem for us. In these conditions the airplane starts to struggle to climb a bit above 13,000 so this is where we put the aircraft into altitude hold mode. It levels off nicely, we're at a safe height for the terrain and our airspeed starts to increase again. So we're now essentially at our top of climb so we'll find our final descent altitude. We can see here at the bottom of our flight plan our final approach fix is at 1200 feet. So we'll dial that in as our desired altitude and we'll then activate VNAV mode which will calculate a vertical descent path and a top of descent. If we now look at the MFD on the right hand side you can see a descent path has been calculated and a top of descent timer is displayed at the bottom of the menu. Our flight at low altitude was quite nice for sightseeing but now we're at 13,000 feet we're heading into some fairly lively weather. Checking the weather radar we can see the clouds ahead are in red which means we probably shouldn't go through them. But I'm sure it will be fine so we'll put the anti-ice on to make sure we don't ice up and fall out of the sky and we'll plough on. Conditions inside the cloud are just as bad as we expect but the temperature stays above freezing and our top of descent approaches shortly afterwards so we can see the vertical deviation marker appear on the PFD as well as our top of descent timer and suggested vertical path on the MFD. At top of descent the plane will start to descend in vertical path mode and manage its descent. You should manage speed with the throttle. We'll now take a look at how to modify waypoints along your route. We're actually going to remove our initial approach fix to give us a smoother path onto final. To do that we scroll down to the waypoint in the flight plan. We hit clear and enter to confirm and we now have a much smoother left curve onto approach. You'll also note that at points along your descent path the airplane will level off at its set altitude for that waypoint. Altitude mode will engage, VNAV will stay armed and you'll have a new countdown to your next top of descent. As we finally head out of the clouds and arrive at that next descent point We'll disengage the anti-ice and the plane will automatically continue its descent in vertical path mode. As you continue your approach, provided you've tuned the correct ILS frequency, the plane will automatically acquire the localizer and start to follow it. At this point you should activate approach mode and begin to slow the airplane down. You'll likely reach your bottom of descent around the same time, so this deceleration will happen quite quickly. Remember to apply flaps to suit your speed. Approach speed in the SR22 sits somewhere between 80 and 90 knots. In approach mode the glide slope will be armed and you'll see that vertical deviation marker start to move as you get closer to the runway. The plane will then begin to descend on the glide slope and you should manage your throttle and approach speed during this descent. Conditions are pretty poor during approach, but we can see the runway. We'll just keep the autopilot engaged for now. Thankfully winds are pretty calm. We continue to let the autopilot follow the glide slope and localizer. It does actually start to apply a gentle flare as it gets closer to the ground. So at this point we'll bring the throttles back to idle and increase that flare angle manually to make a touchdown. Of course the wind then tries to take the plane so we're hard on the rudder to keep the plane rolling straight. And that concludes our work entitled G1000 demonstration flight in the Cirrus SR22. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this useful and entertaining. If you did please drop a like and feel free to subscribe as I make this kind of content fairly regularly. Take care and I'll see you next time.